The Kia Soul has always been a lovable little crossover, and for 2020, this third generation model is no different. It's radically styled, it's more tech focused, and we're gonna go over the five things we really love about it. The first thing we really love about the 2020 Soul is the way it looks. This new grille is much larger and lower down than the previous gen. You get these sleek DRLs up here, and the headlights actually are these funky boxes down here. I wish they were kind of up here, but it doesn't really matter. You don't notice them when you're driving. And this is the X-Line model, which means you get some funny silver plastic down here, you get some plastic cladding over here, and you get 18-inch wheels. Honestly, I think the X-Line is probably my favorite trim outside of the fully spec GT model. It looks a little more rugged than the regular sole and it just gives it some personality. What makes the sole a sole is obviously the roof. It doesn't look like anything else on the road and it's been that way since first gen. But for 2020, one thing that's really different is this right here, floating roof line. I know that's a big trendy thing, but I really don't think the sole needs it. It looks okay, but it could do without it. And this gravity gray paint job looks especially good with the X-Line features. The black plastic cladding and the silver cladding really mesh with this gray color. So another thing of the X-Line package is you get this silver roof bar here, which is functional. Probably not very functional, but functional enough. And you get the silver side mirrors here too. Outside of the squinty-eyed front fascia, probably the 2020 Soul's biggest design change is this right here. Kia calls it boomerang taillights, and they don't light up all the way, but you get these two sections here that mostly light up, and you get the brake light up here. Another neat feature is this little piece of body paneling right here that kind of separates the back window from the rest of the body. And obviously, all of this has changed. This is a new diffuser, and the X-Line stuff carries over out back, the silver cladding. What we really love about the 2020 Soul and all Souls in general is the amount of trims that you get. This is the X-Line, like we mentioned, and it comes with 18-inch wheels, some plastic cladding, and some other little details. But you can always opt for a base LX model, a sporty S model, or a fully spec GT line, and honestly, none of them are that pricey. For the X-Line, it starts at just 21,000, and with a few options, it only goes up to 22 here. Unlike competitors like the CHR or the Kicks, where the roof line is sloped and the back seat feels a little cramped, the Soul's flat roof line makes it really spacious back here. You get 39 and a half inches of headroom, which is best in class, and nearly 40 inches of legroom all around. Even at my normal seating position, I'm able to stretch out and be comfortable. At 22,000, the Soul X line feels like a great value. Granted, it's not perfect. You don't get push button start, you don't get some active safety equipment, and you still have to deal with cloth seats. But you do get Apple CarPlay, you do get some passive safety equipment, and honestly, it really has anything you'll ever need. If you want to go base, base sole, you can, and it's still a great car. And you only pay just $17,000, which puts it towards the bottom end of the class in terms of affordability. Unlike other crossovers in this class that are just fine on the road, Nissan Kicks, the Kia Soul is actually pretty fun to drive. Even on the X-Line model, where you get the less powerful two liter engine that produces just 147 horsepower, it feels like more than enough and the handling is really good. It never feels like it's too big or too bulky. You won't miss the automatic gearbox here. The intelligent CVT in the Soul is really refined and really puts the power down immediately. You won't be blown away by how the Kia Soul drives, but it's perfectly competent for this class. The suspension is firm, but it soaks up a lot of the impurities on the road. The steering is well weighted and not too heavy. Frankly, there's nothing really special about the way it drives. It's just really good and that's what a lot of consumers in this class probably want the ability to just jump in the driver's seat and go wherever they want without a fuss 